Hello and welcome back. This is uh, my Through the Ages digital port rules explanation slash playthrough. This is part two. Uh, you'll find in the description of this video the link for part one uh, where we go through antiquity and age one. Now we're in age two. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's see. Homer has just died for the green people, the green civilization. Um, they're kind of creeping up on military here, so I'm going to have to start thinking about that. And it is our turn at the beginning of age two. So we got some new cards here, some new military cards at the end of the last phase, because we didn't play any military cards. We didn't use any military actions. So take a look at what they are. Uh, developed territory is another colony, so it's possible we might play that. Vast territory is another colony. Oh, so many colonies. Okay, so... We are going to put one of those colonies in. Which one do we like more? Three research, a worker, and a cube. Or three money, three workers, and you lose a cube. Let's put that guy in. Yay! Alright. So, colonization. Um, the way the colonization works is you need to spend... Basically, you need to spend military value some combination of military value and colony boats. So I have this card that gives me a one colony boat advantage and I have three uh, infantry units and each one is worth one military strength. So when you bid, you have to have a minimum of one of your strength colony points coming from an actual unit because you need thematically, you need to actually send people to the colony to go there. You can't just be like, my ideas, and shout your ideas over there and hope that it goes well, because it, it's not going to go well. Um, so I'm going to bid two, which is going to be one of my infantry units and this card. Um, now, before I do that, actually, let me explain the difference between the digital bidding and tabletop bidding. Tabletop bidding, you go in order. You just keep, it's like an auction. Um, so whoever reveals the card bids first and they say like one strength and then the next person's like two and the next person's like three and then the next person's like pass. Um, and you keep going until everybody except one person has passed. The digital rules are a little bit more streamlined. You say what the maximum is that you are willing to spend for this colony. And the system collates all the bids and then let's say I bid four and the, and the green bids two. The system would be like, okay, Rachel, you have to pay three because it would be the lowest amount that I could pay that would still beat green's bid, if that makes sense. If green bid five and I bid one, green would only have to pay two because it's the least that they would have to pay to still be able to beat me. So I want this, but I don't want it super bad. So I'm just going to go ahead and bid two on it and let's see what happens. So... I bid two. I don't know why it's saying two plus. Um, oh, I guess I would beat ties because I'm Genghis Khan. Um, so I send one unit and one card to colonize it. It's not the worst thing in the world. You see that my strength falls way down because I lost one unit from here, but I also no longer fulfill the requirements for my tactic, which is fine. I have these knights. Remember, I got these knights. So I can use these knights to start fulfilling this tactic because Genghis Khan is not going to live forever. Um, okay, are there any new cards up here I want to talk about? Yes, Bread and Circuses is a new genre of urban building. It's an arena. Um, Arenas provide military strength as well as happy faces. I like the idea of arenas. I'm probably going to get that at some point. And we see here from level two, our first level two card is coal. Each worker on coal, which is a mine, is going to produce three resources instead of one. Coal is efficient. Okay, so we have six research Yep, we're going to go ahead and play iron. So we can start making some more uh, people, or some more rocks. Now remember, we got rich land specifically so we can upgrade 
So this is going to give us a two discount upgrading from bronze to iron. And remember, we paid two originally for each of our bronze mines. Iron cost five, so it's only going to cost us three to upgrade up. It'll cost us five to build a whole new mine, which we can't do because we only have four. So let's use rich land to upgrade an age A mine to age one, which will only cost us one additional rock out of our own pool. So now we're producing four rocks each turn instead of three. And we still have three rocks left. So here's my thing. I don't like being this low in military when they are above me. I don't like it. It's not an ideal situation. So I'm only going to upgrade one of my mines right now because I want to rebuild I want to rebuild an infantry. So let's rebuild a warrior. And that puts us back up to seven, which I'm happy with. And we have three civil actions left. So theocracy is another government. We're not going to change to theocracy because I don't want to lose a civil action. It would produce a point and give us a military strength and a happy face. Because people love theocracies, but I don't know. It, sometimes it's hard for me in these games to separate what I actually, as Rachel, would want in a civilization versus what's probably best for the way my civilization's growing. And I could try to steamroll myself into being like, no, 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 no. I wouldn't want that in real life. I don't want it in through the ages, which sometimes is bad. Oof, we need to take that printing press is what we need to do. So we're going to take this into our little hand and we'll be able to play it next turn and hopefully build some dudes on it. And we're going to go ahead and take bread and circuses as well. So we're not going to spend any more military actions. We're going to end our turn. Now you might be wondering why I didn't play this tactic since I have three infantry. You can only ever have one tactic in play at a time. So if I played that infantryman tactic, it would negate my cavalry tactic which would lower my military by two, which is not what I want at all. Okay, let's see. Green has seven victory points total, and we have 26, so things are going pretty well. Now, one of the types of military cards that you can get is a war, um, and one of the war types is a war over culture, so you want to be careful. You don't, as long as you have a lot of culture, you want to have a strong military, so it's hard for people to take your culture away from you. There have been times, definitely, when I've been playing this game, the tabletop version with real people, and I get kind I get blinders on where I just think, ooh, I, I'm, my civilization is going to be super cultured. We're just going to have a bunch of libraries. We're going to make some science. We're going to make so many points. Like, it's going to be great. We're going to just be the best culture. Forgetting the fact that that puts a huge target on my back because the whole victory condition is whoever has the most culture points. And so by the time it gets to be age two or age three, when the wars start coming out, and it's just like war on culture on me, war on culture on me, war on culture on me, and it's, it's, it's less fun than you might think. And you probably are thinking, that doesn't sound that fun to begin with, Rachel. You're right. Okay, so we have these four cards. We got these two new ones. Immigration. All civilizations calculate half your discontent workers and round up on your turn, lose that many population. So remember, discontent workers are if you don't have the happy faces needed to cover uh, your, your worker pool down here. So we're good, and we would be good even to recruit two more people before we would start having discontent workers. You see, we start needing way more happy faces. Okay. Um... So it's immigration. Aggression spy, take up to five science from your rival. Ooh, I like that. Let's do that. Because we still have more than them. Not by much, but... Uh, and they have a permanent bonus. Uh, a permanent colonizing bonus of two. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we play this. Let's confirm. It failed. So they discarded this card to defend, which boosted them up to seven, which is fine. It's fine. They got rid of that card, so that's something. Okay, what are we looking at here? St. Peter's Basilica is a new wonder. Each other card or worker that gives you at least one happy face now gives you an extra one happy face. Mm, I like that. Uh, the Kremlin is a thing. It gives you an extra action of each kind and two culture points, but it also gives you, like, your workers are discontent because it's the Kremlin. The Eiffel Tower 
gives you a happy face because everybody loves it. Oh, France, it's so beautiful. And it gives you four culture points, which is no joke. Over here we have journalism, which is our level two library, which produces two culture and two research per turn, which is pretty neat. Mm, anything else of interest? Coal we've seen. Okay, so I might try to get St. Peter's Basilica just because, well, I don't know. I'm gonna have bread and circuses. I don't need St. Peter's Basilica. I might hold out for a different wonder in H2. I'm going to. Okay, so let's start by getting a printing press out on the board. So we develop a printing press for three research. And now we have a worker here ready to go and get started in that printing press. So let's build a new library. And that's going to raise our culture production and our research production by one each. Um, so the next turn, what we're going to want to do is play knights. Because, like I said, Genghis Khan can't live forever. Um, okay, because we need to start getting some more research. You see that the cost, the research cost of these cards is getting higher and higher. So we want to start getting our research up higher and higher so we can afford these, these more expensive things. Now I'm left with only two rocks, I have no workers, and I have three actions. So what I'm going to want to do is probably take some of these cards, break through, develop a technology, and after you pay the cost you get to research back. That's pretty neat. Rich land lets you build or upgrade a mine or farm. Ooh, we do have those mines that need to be upgraded. And frugality, increase your population after you pay the food cost gain too. Now, here's the problem though. Remember, our hand limit is only five. We already have three down here. We could take these two rich lands though. And then we'd be able to upgrade two of our mines next turn. Yep. In turn, we have two military actions left, so we'll get two new military cards. They're not very interesting. Uh, see, they have a discontent worker. That's what this orange means. So that's not great for them. What? They're going to build the Kremlin. They're already discontent. This AI sometimes, I wonder. Okay. So political phase, we can play one of these green cards, one of these events. So the weakest civilization loses three points and a blue token. Sure. Let's do a crime wave. Now that was a level two card. Oh no, we lose a population. That's not great. Um, so I got two points for playing it. Now we have to lose a population. Hmm. Well, we're going to build a knight unit anyway. So let's go ahead and lose one of our infantrymen. Okay. So now let's play this carefully. We have five points, five research. So let's play a knight, research a knight card, and then let's have a new baby because we have enough food. And then let's go to knights, let's build it. So that gives us more military strength too because the knight is worth one more point than the infantryman was infantry man and let's play rich land to upgrade one of our mines and let's play our other rich land to upgrade our other mine so now we're making six rocks a turn let's see how that compares to what the green is doing the green's only making three they are making two food they're making yeah they're making less than us with everything except for food and they are discontent all right I'll take it. Um, so we have one more civil action, which we're going to use to go ahead and get the upgrade for journalism for our library. Um, I really want there to be one of the better farm buildings to come out. Actually, what I really want is this wonder that lets you uh, take people without paying for them. Which sounds terrible. Ugh. All right, so we get to discard. We get to. 
we remember our military hand size is three we have four we're going to discard one of these cards probably one of these level one cards this tactic we're going to get rid of we're going to try to migrate all of our military over to uh, the cavalry um so let's go ahead and get rid of this infantry tactic and then we'll go on with our lives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Hmm. Bach is the leader of her civilization. Fun. Good for her. Okay. Political phase. We can play one of these. Whoa, they have more military than us. Unacceptable. Well, we'll throw immigration out. See what happens. Everybody produces food immediately. Oh, that's good. We should be able to afford a baby now. Um, look at our new tactic over here. Why is this interesting? For every two cavalry and one infantryman we have we would get either three points or five points um what this means is if the technology of your infantryman was within one of this level then and the level of your cavalryman was within one you would get the higher number now our infantrymen are level a because they're just warriors so it's not within one of this level so we would actually only get three points but that's worth keeping around because, like I keep saying, Genghis Khan is not living forever. Now, oh, what do I want to do? I don't like having less military. It should not come as a surprise. Hmm. Team sports is our arena upgrade. Okay, let's just go ahead and play bread and circuses. And we'll have a baby that we'll send to work in the arena, which boosts us up by one point military wise. And then we're going to destroy one of our workers. Now, when we disband it, it goes to our worker pool, not our worker bank. So we'd be able to redeploy it as a knight. Let's go ahead and disband it. And then we will build a new knight. And that'll tie us up again with old Bach. Um, we have two actions left. I mean, I'm still worried about how little... Um, research we're producing so I don't really have anything for that though not up there okay let's take urban growth because we're gonna want to build urban buildings it's gonna give us a discount and let's go ahead and take mm, let's take reserves um, for three rocks or three food because we'll be able to have a baby with that okay now we have four cards again. We can only have three. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of this raid because it's uh, not looking like anytime soon. Well, we have more military than them because they're pretty vehement about matching us for that. Republic. Republic is neat because it's seven civil actions and only two military actions, but that doesn't matter. But it's 13 research and I'm not, it's taking me some time to get up there. Okay, let's go ahead and throw this out as uh, our civil action. Let's see what we get. Another territory. So we have these cards. So we can, I would feel comfortable bidding five.
That's a lot of rocks. You know what? I want to save those cards because there's that one that's got population. I want that population one. I don't want this one. So we'll build, okay, we'll just build three. We'll see what happens. So they built, bid, they bid four or more. So we don't know how many they actually bid. They just have to pay one more than what I bid. So they just have to pay four. That's fine. Let them have all those rocks. Let them eat rocks. Uh, ooh, there's the wonder I wanted. Ocean liner service. That's going to be all my civil actions. So the ocean liner service lets you uh, gain one population that does not cost you any food or any actions. I like that. I like that. It's the ultimate in frugality. Um, okay. So let's... Hmm, what do we want to do? Selective breeding is... Uh, an upgrade for our um, farms. Yeah. All right, we'll take selective breeding, we'll play selective breeding, and we will upgrade one of our uh, food one of our farms up there. Now, as far as this is concerned, let's go ahead and disband this warrior unit and build a knight unit. Good. And now we're ready for the inevitable death of Genghis Khan. Okay, let's get out of the screen. Let's see what they do. I don't think they're going to they're not going to have enough civil action. Oh, no, they would have enough civil actions to take the ocean liner. But they're not doing it, thank goodness. The ocean liner is going to be cheapish for us. Cheapish. Ah, Napoleon. Mm, yep, I want Napoleon. So Napoleon, before we do Napoleon, let's send our developed territory. Good. Vast territory is the one that I'm excited about. The reason we know that is because um, we prepared that event, apparently. So, yeah, let's go ahead and play it. And this is the one that we wanted. So we're going to bid, oh dear, we're going to bid six. Oh, no. They bid seven or more, which is fine. That means our military is going to go down even further. <laughs> okay, this guy, Napoleon Bonaparte. He gives you plus two. Whoops, a doodle. He gives, where is it? Come back. He gives you plus two strength for each different type of military unit you have. Actually, that's not super great for me because I, oh, I have limited myself to cavalry. But, hmm. It could be good for green. No, they just have workers or infantrymen. Okay. Let's take the ocean liner service. And... Why can't I play masonry? I can. That would let me build two stages of wonder for one civil action. We'll do that next time. Well, mm, it doesn't matter. I don't want any more of those. Still can't have a baby. Okay. So it's four, which would leave me with three, and to upgrade to civil, to selective breeding is four. Not great. That's fine. We'll just go ahead and spend masonry, and then build two stages of the wonder, because masonry lets us build two for one. We only have four cards left, which means H2, or H3 is actually going to start um, after this turn. <gasps> no! That means Genghis Khan's going to die. That actually shouldn't affect anything. Because I took care of it. It means I'm not going to get any more points from him. That's alright. Okay, so let's end our turn. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. And H3. I lost Genghis Khan, but you see that my military stayed the same. 
Thank goodness I mitigated that. Okay, so let's get to page two. Um, I will put a link for H3's playthrough in the description of this video once it is published. And again, I hope this was helpful, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a nice day.